Hi guys, I'm Sonder Smith, and this is tutorial how to print and assemble my first mechanized mask. All the parts are already placed on a bed the most optimal way, so I recommend to print them as they are with the following settings. For 0.4 mm nozzle, layer height is 0.2, line width is 0.4, wall line count is 3. Z seam position is on far right corner of your build plate. Three top layers, two bottom layers. Infill density depends on which pattern you use. I prefer geroid pattern and in this case 20% is more than enough. I also use triangles, but it needs higher density, from 25 to 35 percent. Printing speed depends on your 3D printer model and its capabilities, but I think in any case you can use 60 mm per second for infill and 44 walls. If you can print faster without any issues, just do it. You don't need additional supports to print this mask because embedded supports are already exist, so turn this setting off, but it would be useful to turn bridges on. If your supports don't break straight away, I don't recommend to tear them off, it would be better to cut them off carefully with a knife. An excess film at the bottom can be removed by scissors. If you have some strings at the surface, you can get rid of them by a lighter with a straight fire like this one. Just be careful. Now you've got something like this. Upper and lower jaws consist of two pieces that should be glued together. I recommend using an instant glue in a gel form. Wear gloves and protective glasses working with it. Put a thin layer of glue on one piece, then attach it to another one, trying to align all the points. Press the parts together and wipe excess glue off if needed. Let's make a forehead pad and cover nose pads with soft material. I'm using two layers of 2 mm thick EVA foam bonded by hot glue and double-sided adhesive tape. Put M4 nuts into special slots, placing nylon rings away from screws. Put magnets into special slots. Don't mix up polarities. Pass a cord through a hole with a gap of upper lever fang, make a simple overhand knot and pull the cord, hiding the knot in a chamber. If your knot pops off, just add one or more loops, making an overhand knot. It has to be locked in a chamber, but it doesn't have to stick out. Cut off the end. Make the cord about 29 cm in length. Put a cord into the side hole of the upper lever. Make the same knot as before, cut off the free end, then make the cord length equal 28 cm. 
Fold a fishing line in half, pass it through the channel inside the upper lever. Put the fan cord into the loop and pass it through. Connect the fan to the lever and check how it works. Put a little spring into the fan. Then take a toothpick or a pin and push the hook onto the fan until it locks in a cavity. Make sure that it works. Put the lever spring in its place. Press the spring until it goes in, then hook up the end. The lever has a pin at the end. Put it into the ring and release. Put a screw into the lever hole and make some turns until the lever barely stacks in its end position and the spring isn't longer able to move it. Then make a quarter turn back. Now the gap size is correct. Let's take a look at this place. We can see here three side holes and three bottom holes. Push the fishing line loop through the bottom side hole, put the fan cord into the loop and pull it out. Then repeat it on the bottom hole nearest to fangs. Check if it works and repeat the step on another top lever. Let's assemble a bottom lever. The process is similar except of cord lengths. The fan cord length is 38 cm long and the lever cord is 25. Put the fishing line loop into the hole which is closer to fangs on this plane. Pass it through the channel and pull out the fang cord. Then do the same thing on nearby channel and lever cord. Put the bottom lever spring in its place. Then install the lever compressing the spring. Secure it with the screw, make some turns until it touches the nylon ring and it goes significantly tighter and pull both cords out one by one. Then adjust the gap size as you did before. Repeat all the steps on the opposite side. If the levers aren't aligned, you can fix it by turning the screw. Let's connect mask parts. First align one hinge, then snap another hinge and close the jaws. Using the fishing line method, Pass cord ends from lower jaw to upper one through the channels right in front of them. Put the last cord end into the bottom part. Let's tune the tension of the cords. Make an overhand knot close to the first hole and put a hex key into it. Then pass the end through the tunnel Get the hex key out of the knot and put the cord in there. Then pull the end forward to tie the knot. Now we've just created a kind of ratchet system. We can add tension by pulling the end backward and we can loosen it by pulling the middle part up. So pull the cord until the upper lever starts moving, then slightly release the tension to move it back. And check it out. Then we should secure the tension by another knot. Pass the end underneath the tensioned cord, move it back through the created loop and make it tight. Let's go to the other cords. Make a ratchet on the top row. It controls the bottom lever. It has to move right away as the jaw starts opening, but when it's closed, it has to be aligned with the front surface. Secure the ratchet and make the other ones to adjust the tension of fan cords. Leave them loosen so far. Open jaws and put a towel in between to fix their position. 
pull the bottom cord backward until the upper fang reaches its limit. Adjust tension of the bottom fang cord as well. Then secure the ratchets and repeat the step on another side. Now you can add magnet couples in this place and lock them with caps. These magnets eliminate a gap between jaws in the closed state. The tension tuning is done, but we should do something with all these ends. I don't recommend to cut them off, instead of that, you can hide them in the special channel. But first, pay attention to this hidden hole. Put the fishing line loop in there and pass the cord back through. Then you can notice an inlet in the corner. Insert the fishing line loop in there. Put all the ends together. Insert that bunch in the loop on the length about a centimeter or two and get the fishing line out. I removed the forehead part earlier, so I am getting it back now and installing nose parts. If you want to cover the jaws from inside with black fabric, make two pieces of velcro 6 cm in length each and glue them using a hot glue. Then you will need a piece of elastic fabric. The most simple solution – a couple of socks. It's cheap, easy to find anywhere, and this fabric sticks to velcro itself without another half of velcro strip. Connect buckles to the mask and insert strap ends into them as it's shown here. You can adjust the length at any side. That's it guys, good luck with the project, bye!